Hey, it's Lindsay, and welcome to another episode of the Daily Log Diaries. Today I'm going to be sharing a new fountain pen that I recently picked up and how I like to fill an ink cartridge with my own ink and in general spend some time with my passport sized traveler's notebooks. I have been with them pretty consistently over the last couple weeks, but here is the new pen that I got. This is the Coeco Bronze Sport, and I went for an extra fine nib. And if you know me, I am obsessed with bronze and copper colored things. I'm not a huge fan of rose gold. Pink is not a color that I typically go for, um, but I really like this bronze color. It's almost like a champagne copper might be a good way of putting it. And this is in comparison to my very patinaed Coeco Brass Sport Edition. But I picked this up after Yoseka shared that it is heavier than the bronze edition. Uh, here's also a color comparison to the copper charm from Traveler's Company X Starbucks. I got that charm off of Etsy, by the way. So the Sakura charm, the copper is a lot more pink based in comparison to the bronze and I opted to get the matching bronze clip. I think the clip is a little bit more patina than the pen so I'm hoping that this pen will patina to match the clip or get kind of that shade. I'm excited to see how it changes but I really prefer heavier fountain pens. They don't make the best pen for like a really long writing session so if you're an author and you like to put pen to paper probably wouldn't recommend something like this but i find a heavier pen it just feels nice in my hand and my handwriting looks nicer in my opinion i also opted to get some of these satillier i don't know how to pronounce that so i apologize but got a sticker sheet this was like a bakery set and i fell in love with this little toaster at the bottom here so had to have it <laughs> But I ordered these things from Jet Pens, which is my go-to. I typically get my fountain pens from Yoseka, actually, but they didn't have the clip in stock, and I knew I wanted the clip to match, so I went over to Jet Pens, which is a tried and true. With the Coecos, the converter is terrible. Like, it's just terribly small. There's not enough ink capacity for me to even make it a month. <laughs> or a couple of weeks so i actually like to refill the cartridge which i'll show you how i do that uh, here in a bit but i'm trying to decide what color i want to ink it up with when i originally picked up the pen i was thinking i would put like red inks in here but i think a brown or even a green would pair really nice with it i am strangely the kind of person who likes to match their pen body to the ink i never thought that would be the type of person i am but here we are but I decided to go with uh, Diamine Ancient Copper, which is one of the first inks I ever purchased. It smears terribly uh, as a heads up. So I'm taking an ink syringe and I punctured the cartridge and now I'm essentially sucking whatever ink out that I can with the syringe. And then after I get the bulk of it out, I will fill the syringe with water and essentially flush out the cartridge. This is a messy process. My fingers are blue and red <laughs> all over by the end of this, but I find this is a really easy way just to kind of reuse the cartridge. And then once that cartridge is clean, I will let it air dry for a little bit. Uh, I cut that out, thankfully, so it looks like it dried right away. But I just leave it upside down on a paper towel or a cloth for a couple of hours just to make sure that all the water filters out of the cartridge before I fill it with ink. And then I use the same ink syringe to essentially refill the cartridge with the Diamine Ancient Copper. Again, it's messier than it probably ought to be, but I find this is just what's easiest for me. And the cartridges just have a bit more ink capacity than the converter. And 
I, I mean, I switch my pens up quite a bit. I don't use the same pen to journal with for an entire month. So this one cartridge will probably last me a month easily, depending on how much I journal with it. I went for the extra fine nib. I think I mentioned that earlier and I do really like it. I think Kawekos can kind of be known for having hit or miss nibs. A lot of people say that they're really scratchy or they're misaligned right out of the bat. I think I've been pretty lucky. I've had three Kawekos. I sold one of them, but um, this I guess is the second Kaweco that lives in my collection and the nib is pretty much fine. So here I am just putting that cartridge uh, into the nib and screwing the body back on and then I, I don't know I just give it a flick for good measure <laughs> hope that helps the ink start flowing and then we'll give this a quick pen test I got nervous to put it on my current journal spread this is my passport size traveler's notebook in the traveler's records edition and the insert I'm using is from Good Ink Pressions. I'll have the details down below, but it's my usual insert if you've been following along with other episodes of the Daily Log Diaries. I forgot how much I like this ink. It's such a cool color. I've been using a red ink from Sailor whenever I want this kind of tone, but this has a much more like brick orange undertone. And yeah, I really like it. So now I'm switching gears a little bit and I'm getting ready to film my April plan with me, which will be the next video up on my channel. And I think I'm going to switch it up for April and film setting up my passport versus my Hobonichi because I've been reaching for my passport most often. I made this uh, vision board in Canva. I use the free tools. And I found the photos on Pinterest this month. You know, use Pinterest photos at your own discretion, I guess. But um, yeah, I really like the overall tone. Uh, so you'll see that in uh, another video if you decide to come back. This is the Fiskars trimmer, by the way. I can put the name of it down in the description box for you. But I, I've had it for like three or four years now and it's still going strong. <laughs> April will be the beginning of quarter two and if how you know the pace that I'm using pages and my current insert for my bullet journal I'll have to move book for my April setup so I've got a fresh insert there. I'm still going back and forth on what I want to do for my quarter two setup. I'm really considering putting all of my weeklies together. If you guys have seen my passport bullet journal, I typically in my quarterly book, I do like a monthly vision board, a habit tracker, the weeks that correspond with that month. And then I roll into my daily logs and I repeat that month after month. But what I'm considering doing for this next insert is putting all of the weeklies together for three or four months so that I don't have to set them up each month because I think quarter two is going to be pretty busy for me. And then I'll just do a vision board and then follow it immediately with my daily logs. I'm a bit nervous to do that, so let me know what you guys think. I think it would feel very much like my Hobonichi Weeks if I did that, and it could be good in the long run, but I know that if I decide I want a new weekly spread, then the temptation to just scrap this entire insert will be very high. <laughs> So now I've got my bullet journal out, speaking of, and I'm updating my to-do list for the day. I did some editing off camera for Patreon. I did like a watercolor with me. If you're ever looking for bonus videos from me, I'd recommend supporting me there. On the lowest tier, you get access to all my exclusive content. And at this point, I pretty much do a video a week 
but we're going to be doing a live stream sometime next week and that is patron only this will be the second month doing that and i think what i'm going to do is set up my quarter two insert with them live and then maybe when i move into that insert i can do like a recap video for those of you over here on youtube but that's what we're thinking so we'll see how that goes I did some morning pages in my Dear Diary journal insert. Um, I'm still reaching for the double passport duo, as I mentioned earlier. And I got a new pair of Doc Martens, and this is the like second time I've ever attempted to do this. And I went for more like the slip-on Chelsea boot style this time, but I wore them to a concert the night before. We saw Maddie and do a DJ set. He's one of our favorite electronic artists and uh, I wore them, which was probably a stupid idea <laughs> to wear brand new shoes to a concert, but they were super comfortable and I like the look of them. So I doodled them in my daily log and then I tried to replicate that from memory in my journal and I have like apparently no vi vision visual recall I don't is that what it's called <laughs> I, I couldn't draw it from memory so it turned out terrible and I decided I would just redraw it on a sticky note I'm using my Tombow Fudenosuke hard tip brush pen for this and this yellow sticky note is from Daiso I believe it might be posted I don't remember but I drew it roughly about that same size and then I'm going to cut it out and <laughs> glue it over because yeah, it was just, it was terrible. Um, did not look like the shoes at all. <laughs> and since I had the tag from the shoes glued in on the right hand page of my journal that you see, I felt obligated to like do the shoe a little bit more justice. I've been watching a ton of sketchbook tour videos on YouTube lately, and I love this look when people, I assume that they've made a mistake and they don't like how it turned out, so they just like cover part of the drawing with a sticky note and then sketch over it. I, at least I think that's what's happening, but I love the look of it and it kind of gave me that vibe, so I liked how it turned out. Even though this is on a sticky note, it's not completely sticky. So I just pulled out my Tombow Mono removable adhesive just to give it a little extra stick and did my best to cover up the monstrosity that was my original boot sketch. But if you've made it this long, thank you so much for being here and I will talk to you soon.